What's going on guys? It's your boy Terabyte Reacts here and I am back with some more Game of Thrones lore reaction. This one has been actually been requested uh, for a very long time. Um it's finally come up. Um that I have to do it. I actually Did I upload a, a a Game of Thrones video last week? I don't think so. I think I did at the beginning of the week, but then for the whole week um uh, as I told you guys before, I'm very busy. Guys, Game of Thrones fans, you guys are not on the Discord. Get on the Discord. <laughs> you guys are my, um, my fav. My I don't want to say my favorite. You're not necessarily my favorite. It's more like you're the most active on this channel. So I need you guys to get over to the Discord. Click the, the link in the description. Let's go um discuss some game of thrones outside of youtube okay i know you guys are all over the world so you might not be able to do it on your phone um but it it's also a pc um application also you can put it on your pc um i'm not sure about mac as i've said before i don't know if it's available for mac but definitely for pc and you can have it on your phone okay so Make sure you get on that Discord, man. We um, I need some of you guys to get over there and get active and discuss stuff over on Discord, okay? Other than that, when YouTube doesn't notify you guys about videos that comes out, I post all the videos that comes out so you'll get the announcement through Discord, okay? Other than you having to join me on Twitter or anything like that. The Discord is always active. You guys can be there. You guys are fans of, of these shows, man. Um, and as I said before, Game of Thrones, you guys are my most active subscribers on this channel. Regardless. So, I love you guys for that. Anyways, and I know there's crisscross with other things that I do. You guys watch the other reactions on the channel also. So, I thank you guys for that also. Okay, so we are moving up and forward. I am not sure if this is the video that you guys want me to react to, but you guys have said react to the Dance of Dragons, react to the Dance of Dragons. So, um, somebody had sent me this link and I, and I did save it. So, I'm hoping that this is the video that you guys wanted to see. If there's another one out there, I don't have a problem to react to it. There might be new information. It might be different information. It might be more more informative. So... If that's the case, please send that link to me, okay? I'm still taking suggestions. I notice you guys aren't sending me anymore, but it is what it is. I still have a list of videos to do. You guys can keep sending the Game of Thrones stuff, okay? Um, because I have not stopped reacting to the stuff. It's just that there's other things on the channel that I'm trying to get to, and the Game of Thrones stuff is... I'm still putting them out, but I'm trying to kind of balance it out a bit, you know, because I was doing way more Game of Thrones stuff than I was doing every, anything else. So I'm trying to kind of balance it, balance it a little bit more because there are other people that are coming on the channel now. I, there's a lot of anime fans here on the channel now. Um, so I'm trying to kind of appease them due to the fact that Game of Thrones is on a break right now so i can get through the lore and take my time and get through the lore it's not a problem i hope you guys don't mind that um but also you know we're only three months away well not even three months is it three months because we're we're basically in february now you know it's only a week left in january so we're about i don't know I don't want to say three months because it starts mid-April. So I want to say two and a half, about two and a half months before we get our first episode. If you guys were on the Discord, you would have seen that I posted the run times for, game, for the Game of Thrones Season 8 episodes, which is it's going to be um, 60 minutes for the first two episodes and then 80 minutes for the other four. Okay, so... Some epic stuff is going to go down. Hopefully, I'll be able to do multiple parts of the show um, when the episode's here. I'm hoping that we don't get hit 
with any copyright stuff. Um, of course, they're going to claim stuff that I can't put ads on it. But I'm talking about like, hopefully the videos don't get blocked, I should say. Um, but I am planning to do at least without, for the most part, for, for the most part, what I'm planning to do is to do three parts just to keep it to a, just to keep it within where I'm not showing too much. But I, but what I'm going to do, I am going to, if there's no restrictions on YouTube, I am going to put up two parts on YouTube for you guys to watch two or three parts, right? Depending, right? And then I'm going to do, I'm going to put up the full reaction on the Google drive. If you guys don't know about the Google drive, that is something I've been doing for my other shows. So that's what I'm planning to do. So you guys can enjoy the entire episode with me and not just, you know, parts of it with cuts and edits and stuff. So that is the case. That is what I'm planning to do. OK, so once when Game of Thrones comes out, you can expect that. OK, so let's jump into this man, Dance of Dragons. This is what you guys a lot of you guys have been waiting on me to to react to this because this is some history. I remember when Shireen was talking about this during the episode, um, a conversation she was having with Stannis and Stannis was like, why do they call it a dance? So it's pretty interesting. It was, it was actually a book that she was reading. Um, so I don't know exactly what, what the dance of dragons is about. It has to be something like maybe a conflict within the Targaryens. That's what I'm thinking. Why they call it, why they call it that because it's not an actual dance. <laughs> so, I'm thinking it's got to be something like the Targaryens fighting over something or or something like that. So let's let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. Let's go. Okay, I really do need to fix the filter on my my green screen. As you can see, it's clear there on the black on the black background. Sometimes it resets like that for no reason. So let me let me uh fix that real quick um bear with me here i've been doing this a lot of my videos um and i don't i want to stop doing that because i need to be more prepared but because i'm traveling with my with my setup sometimes this happens so bear with me guys for a few okay there we go okay much better all right let's jump into this man i've talked for enough time let's go Turn that up. The Dance of Dragons, a true yeah. telling by Grand Maester Munkin, being a history of the war of Targaryen succession between the Princess Rhaenyra and Aegon, second of his name, that nearly destroyed the realm. The Dance of the Dragons, a stupid name for a Targaryen civil war where my ancestors danced away my birthright. Mm. Before the war, House Targaryen counted 18 dragons. By the end, we had two, and nearly wow. a few Targaryens. We would never be as powerful or as feared again. The dance began, as many dances do, with an old man and a young girl. The queen had failed to produce a son for her king, and so he anointed his daughter, the princess Rhaenyra, as his heir. But years later, mm. the king remarried, and his new wife, Queen Alicent of House Hightower, gave him a son. Feeble and foolish, the old king refused to change the succession. He didn't even see how his court had split into two rival camps of blacks and greens after the dresses of the princess and the queen had worn to some tawny. One night, a servant found the old king had died in his sleep, and ran to inform Queen Alicent. Protocol dictated that the bells would be rung and a raven sent to Dragonstone to summon the heir, Princess Rhaenyra, to her coronation. But Alicent had other plans. Once she saw her dead husband's body, she sealed the room and had the servant thrown into the black cells to ensure his silence. At the hour of the owl, the Lord Commander of the King's Guard, Sir Criston Cole, summoned the small council to inform them of the King's death. Sir Otto Hightower, the hand of the King and father to Queen Alicent, demanded that the succession be settled immediately. The decrepit old men of the small council were confused. The succession was settled in their minds. The old King had forced the Lords of Westeros to swear fealty to Princess Rhaenyra as his heir. But Sir Criston Cole rightly pointed out that a son comes before a daughter. 
The council argued until dawn, when the master of coin finally stood up and declared he would have no part of treason. Sir Christopher Cole wisely opened his throat with a dagger, ending the debate. None were more surprised to hear of Prince Aegon's succession than Prince Aegon himself. At first, the fool rejected the crown, but his mother pointed out that his sister Rhaenyra would return such loyalty by taking his head. As the old king's trueborn son, he'd always be a threat. Aegon relented. He was crowned in the dragon pit, and his wife and sister Helena became queen. His brother Aemon flew off to win over the few great lords who support Aegon didn't already have. The banner of the gold dragon flew over King's Landing and the Red Keep as Aegon, second of his name, ascended the Iron Throne. He would not sit it long. When ravens carried the news of Aegon's coronation to Dragonstone, Princess Rhaenyra summoned her own Black Council. With her was her uncle and husband, Daemon Targaryen, considered by many to be the most dangerous man in Westeros. Few lords supported her, but the greatest of these was Corlys Valerian, who controlled the largest fleet in the realm, and his Targaryen wife, Rhaenys, the old king's sister. Then there were her five sons, although none grown to manhood. A pitiful assembly, really. Combined, they couldn't match the power of House Hightower alone. But Rhaenyra had dragons. She, Daemon, and Rhaenys rode huge and formidable beasts, and three of her five sons were riders as well. Dragonstone also housed six more dragons without riders. Against this, King Aegon had only four dragons of his own. Dragons can burn a city, but only armies can take and hold it. If she was to prevail, Rhaenyra desperately needed the support of the few great houses not already sworn to Aegon. Her eldest son, Jaecaris, flew to the Vale in the north. Her middle son, Lucaris, flew to the Stormlands. Rhaenyra hoped that the war would begin and, if the gods were good, end with diplomacy. As always, they weren't. Little Prince Lucaris must have wet himself when he entered Storm's End and found King Aegon's younger brother Aemond already with Lord Baratheon. Aemond was fearsome even before he lost his eye and set a sapphire in its stead. But the princeling pleaded his mother's case. Finally, Lord Baratheon made his decision. Go home, pup, and tell the bitch your mother that the Lord of Storm's End is not a dog she can whistle up. As Aemon's false eye gleamed at him, the princeling fled the castle and mounted his young dragon, Arax. The rain fell in sheets, and great bolts of lightning lit the world bright as day. Arax was struggling to stay aloft in the gale, when a roar shook the very foundations of Storm's End. Aemon rose through the clouds, and below him, the monstrous Vagar. Vagar was five times the size of Arax, and the hardened survivor of a hundred battles. Vagar caught him above Shipbreaker Bay. Watchers on the castle walls saw distant blasts of flame, and heard a shriek drown out the thunder. Prince Lucaris fell, broken, to be swallowed by the waves. With his death, the War of Ravens came to an end, and the War of Fire and Blood began. When Rhaenyra heard of her son's death, she collapsed. She considered ending the war right then, until a raven arrived from her husband, Daemon. Her son would be avenged. Whispers slithered through the taverns and back alleys of Flea Bottom. Two men were found. One was a former gold cloak, the other a rat catcher in the Red Keep who knew all its secrets. History remembers them only as blood and cheese. <laughs> One night, blood Queen cheese. Helena entered the royal apartments with her daughter and two sons to put them to bed. Without warning, blood and cheese burst in, daggers in hand. They told her that a debt was owed, a son for a son. Blood and cheese demanded she choose which son would be ripped from her. Hold on, I think I heard somebody at the door. Uh. Forever. Queen Helena pleaded with the men to kill her instead, but they refused. Weeping, Helena named her younger son, Melo. Perhaps she thought the boy was too young to understand. Perhaps because the older boy 
was King Aegon's firstborn son and heir. You hear that, little boy? She's whispered to the younger son. Your mama wants you dead. Then blood struck off the older boy's head with a single blow. When the guards burst in, they found Queen Helena still screaming, clasping her dead son's body to her, mad with grief. The blood of their children transformed a dynastic dispute into a war of annihilation. The grief and rage of losing a child could burn down the world. Either Aegon or Rhaenyra could live at the end, but not both. Rhaenyra's forces struck yet another blow. The moment the Lord of Harrenhal saw Daemon Targaryen circling the castle on his dragon Caraxes, he struck his banners and surrendered. The Blacks now had the strongest castle in the Riverlands. Darker news still came to Aegon. Thanks to Rhaenyra's sons, Winterfell had declared for Rhaenyra, as had the Vale. Furious, Aegon dismissed his grandfather, Sir Otto, as hand, and appointed Sir Criston Cole, who swore to march on all the lords who had declared for Rhaenyra and put their castles to the torch. Cole and the royal army first marched north and laid siege to Rook's Rest, a black stronghold near Dragonstone. When their lord saw their approach, he sent a raven to Rhaenyra, begging for help. For days, he watched his fields and villages burning, with no response from his queen. Until one day, a shadow passed over the Green Army. Rhaenyra had sent not an army, but her former mother by law, Rhaenys, and her dragon, Maelys. As her ancestor had done at the Field of Fire, Rhaenys gleefully began to incinerate Sir Criston's army. But Aegon had set a trap, and Rhaenys had flown right into it. As Rhaenys and Maelys blanketed Sir Criston's troops in dragon flame, Two other dragons rose into the sky, Aemon on Vagar and King Aegon himself on the gleaming sunfire. To her credit, Rhaenys didn't flee. Dragon fought dragons, and a second sun blossomed in the sky. When the smoke cleared, only Aemon and Vagar stood uninjured. Sunfire, the most magnificent dragon in the world, had one of its wings almost completely torn from its body. Trapped beneath Sunfire was the king himself broken and burned so badly in places that his armor had fused onto his flesh. Damn! His body survived, but his mind was given over to milk of the poppy. Maylees had been torn to shreds, and her rider, Rhaenys, was a pile of ash. Panicked by the defeat, Rhaenyra shipped her two youngest sons across the narrow sea for their protection, only for her youngest to return days later, clinging to the neck of his wounded and dying dragon. He and his brother had been set upon by an enemy fleet just off Dragonstone. Defying his mother's command, Rhaenyra's eldest son and heir, Jaecaris, mounted his dragon Vermax and flew to rescue his other brother and punish the enemy fleet. But the foolish boy let Vermax be hooked like a trout and dragged into the sea, where he soaked up even more arrows than seawater. His brother disappeared over the horizon or beneath the waves. No one could say for sure. With the loss of four dragons, Rhaenyra's only advantage was fading. Luckily for her, over the centuries, House Targaryen had spilled more than blood on Dragonstone. She promised gold and title to any of the Targaryen bastards who could tame the six unclaimed dragons on the island. These bastards were called the Dragon Seeds, though most were called Supper. And perhaps the dragons were eventually sated or bored, but four of them accepted riders and were enlisted in Rhaenyra's cause. After Rook's rest, Aemond One-Eye took command of the Greens from his crippled and poppy-addled brother. Aemond was the blood of the dragon, and dragons don't cower behind city walls. He marched the King's army north to take back Harrenhal from Rhaenyra's husband, Daemon. But when he and Criston Cole reached the castle, they found the gates open, with Daemon and all his men gone. That night, they feasted their victory. Damon had fled rather than face their wrath. But Damon was more snake than dragon. As Aemon marched north, he'd flown Caraxes south, slithering past the green army over the waters of the God's Eye. One day, King's Landing looked up and saw two dragons circling their foul city. Damon and Rhaenyra had come for her throne, for the city was defenseless. Aemon had taken the King's army from the city, and worse, he'd taken his dragon, Vagar. 
Seeing that resistance was hopeless, the small council surrendered the city, the Queen Mother Alicent, and the broken Queen Helena. But not King Aegon. Somehow, despite his wounds and delirium, he had vanished from the city. And so Queen Rhaenyra climbed the steps and seated herself on the Iron Throne. Legend has it that as she left the hall later, blood trickled down her legs and hands, proving the Iron Throne had spurned her. Nonsense. It's a chair made of steel blades. Rhaenyra had wanted it all her life and had sacrificed two sons for it. She likely gripped the damn thing too tight. When Aemond realized that his arrogance had cost him the capital, he mounted Vagar in a black ridge and rained fire onto every village and castle he suspected of disloyalty. Abandoned by Aemond, Sir Criston marched the royal army back to King's Landing, intent on recapturing the city himself. Instead, he was trapped and cut to pieces by the river lords who had sworn to support Rhaenyra's claim. When a new army of green loyalists marched up from the Reach and laid siege to the city of Tumbleton, Rhaenyra sent two of her dragon seeds to lay waste to them. Instead, the dragon seeds proved their bastard nature and betrayed her. They burned the city and all the black forces garrisoned within. Lucky for her, they didn't turn toward King's Landing, but hoard and drank in the ruins with the greens, who were victorious and somewhat confused. Rhaenyra now mistrusted all the dragon seeds, including the girl who rode with her husband Daemon hunting Aemond in the Riverlands. She ordered the girl's head be sent to her, but there was a complication. As well as her dragon, the girl had taken to riding Daemon. When Daemon received the queen's order, he proclaimed it a queen's words and a whore's work. He sent the girl away at dawn, watching her and her dragon vanish into the morning mists. Then Daemon sent a challenge to his nephew Aemond and flew to Heron Hall alone to wait 14 days later a shadow blacker than any passing cloud swept over heron hall vagar had come at last and on her back rode one-eyed prince aemon he mocked daemon for facing him alone you have lived too long uncle and daemon replied on that much we agree then the old prince climbed stiffly onto the back of his dragon caraxes but neglected to fasten the chains that secured Ryder to saddle. The sun was close to setting when, as one, the two dragons leapt into the sky. Daemon took Caraxes up swiftly until they disappeared into a bank of clouds. Vagar, older and slower, ascended more gradually. Up and up Vagar soared, searching for Caraxes. Sudden as a thunderbolt, a shrieking Caraxes dove upon Vagar. Locked together, the dragons tumbled toward the lake. Caraxes' jaws closed about Vagar's neck, but Vagar raked open Caraxes' belly, and her teeth ripped off a wing. The lake rushed up with terrible speed. Then Daemon Targaryen, who had never fastened his riding chains, stood in his saddle. He leapt from his dragon to Aemon's, and in his hand was Dark Sister, the Valyrian sword of Aegon's sister queen, Visenya. As Aemon one eye looked up in terror, Daemon ripped off his nephew's helm, and drove the sword down into his one remaining eye so hard the point came out the back of the young prince's throat. Damn! A heartbeat later, the dragons struck the lake, sending up a gout of water so high that it was said to have been as tall as Heron Hall's great tower. Damn, the bro. They created a tidal wave at the fall. And then was still. Daemon Targaryen was nine and forty at his death. Prince Aemon had only turned 20. Vagar, the greatest of the Targaryen dragons, had counted 181 years. Thus passed the last living creature from the days of Aegon's conquest. Back in King Damn, Landing, that, Queen that, Rhaenyra didn't have much time to- That die. was... Yo, dude is a beast, bro. Oh my god, he jumped off the dragon. Man, that would have been awesome to see. Grieved for her stupid husband. The mad former queen, Helena, flung herself from a balcony to be impaled upon the iron spikes lining the moat of Magor's holdfast. That night, the city rose in riot against Rhaenyra, 
demanding justice for Queen Helena and her murdered son, among other foolish peasant fantasies. In the midst of this chaos, a one-handed fool called the Shepherd began to rant against dragons. Not just the ones of the enemy, but all dragons everywhere. As he pointed to the dragon pit above on the hill, he shouted, There the demons dwell, this is their city. If you would make it yours, first you must destroy them. The cry went up from 10,000 throats. Kill them! There were four dragons housed within the dragon pit that night. By the time the first of the attackers came pouring in, all four were roused, awake, and angry. Nobody knows how many men and women died that night. Who cares? They all should have. Trapped within the pit, the dragons could not fly. Instead, they fought with horns, claws, teeth, and fire. For every man who died, ten more appeared, shouting that the dragons must die. One by one, they did. Finally, the last remaining dragon broke her chain, spread her wings, and flew straight up at the great dome, trying to flee. Already weakened by dragon flame, the dome cracked under the force of impact, and then tumbled down, crushing dragon slayers and herself. Damn. High atop the Red Keep, Queen Rhaenyra clutched her two remaining sons to her as she watched the end of her family's might, too afraid of the peasants to defend her dragon. At least her older son, Joffrey, had a man's spine. He stole his mother's dragon, Cyrax, and tried to fly it to the dragon pit to save his birthright. But the stupid beast didn't understand and twisted beneath him, fighting to be free of the little boy. Until it was. A queen is still <laughs> a woman, with all the weakness of that sex. Weeping for her lost son more than her dragons, Rhaenyra abandoned the Iron Throne and sold her crown to buy passage for her and her last son back to Dragonstone. Rhaenyra hoped to hatch more dragons from the eggs in the castle. But when she landed, the welcoming party slew her guards and marched her and her son at spear point to the castle to face a dead man and a dying dragon. Sister! King Aegon, second of his name, called out to Rhaenyra. Rook's rest had left Aegon bent and twisted, his once handsome face puffy from milk of the poppy, with burn scars covering half his body. Rhaenyra, ever defiant, told her dear brother that she'd hoped he was dead. After you, Aegon answered. Then, Sunfire bathed her in a blast of flame and devoured her in six bites while her son watched leaving the seventh and final bite her lower leg for the stranger Rhaenyra was dead and King Aegon sat the Iron Throne again but only for half a year he was poisoned by his own men and replaced with the very boy who had watched his mother devoured. When Rhaenyra's last son wed Aegon's only daughter, the Dance of Dragons officially ended. Ashen burned men, all that was left of the Riverlands. Two scared children spouting oaths they didn't understand, all that was left of the mighty House Targaryen. Ancient skulls and hatchlings that grow no bigger than cats. All that was left of the dragons. Damn. All right. Um. That was very interesting. Um. That was very interesting. As for some reason, I'm about to, to, to get a headache, and I don't know why. But I'm gonna chug through the rest of these, um, the rest of these reactions today. Um, probably taking a leave or something um i think i took too long to eat today anyways um the crazy thing about this story because i'm thinking that this is actually something this this is something that happened true events that happened this is lore for for us game of thrones junkies okay the Dance of Dragons, as as far as I can see, I, I, I mean, it's basically explaining why there was no dragons in the actual, the actual, like, the TV series portion of 
this entire story or the books, right? I don't know if there's where the book started because I'm I, I'm guessing that the book started where the TV show started, um, and then there was the history, the histories and stuff that happened after you guys can tell me what the order is i'm i don't know okay it's just i'm guessing okay so the things that the things that are happening that 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 kind of gets me to the point where i'm looking at it and i'm like why why did i mean people have been fighting over this iron throne for years obviously right and I can understand why Viserys is upset because of this, because it destroyed the legacy, the strong legacy that they that they had, and um, from Aegon um, e escaping Valyria and, and coming, um, I'm talking about a Aegon, um, whoever his dad is, I don't remember what his name is. When they escaped and went to Dragonstone, and they grew, I didn't. Uh, um, I keep, uh, a dynasty, as they say, uh, or I'm I'm used to saying dynasty, but they say dynasty in the show. Um, the legacy that they created in, you know, entire Westeros and stuff like that, I would have never imagined that they would be fighting against each other. They were ruling. Why are you fighting? You get what I'm saying? Because of a stupid throne to see who's in charge. You get what I'm saying? It it just it, it just goes to show you that family conflict has always been a part of the Game of Thrones lore from forever. Whether it be the Targaryens, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just f family family conflict has always been a part of a part of Game of Thrones. It it's it's just it's crazy, and it's a they take it to a whole new level. You <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they just, in the Game of Thrones, they just take it to a whole new level. It's just like, you're not good enough, so you're going to die. I don't care if you're my cousin. I don't care if you're my brother, my sister. I don't care. I want to be in charge, so if I can take you out, I'm going to take you out. At no point did they ever sit. At no point did they ever sit and was like, man, we're brothers and sisters, man. Why are we fighting so much? Like, we have the power to rule till the end of time. I mean, you get what I'm saying? Like, there was no uprising. There was no uprising to come and say, okay, they could have planned and killed the dragons, but there were so many of them. If you put all of them together from the account of what they were saying, it's like they had probably around, I want to say about 20 total dragons. Like, who's going to mess with the family with 20 dragons you know what i'm saying like it probably wouldn't have been 20 let's say 15 <laughs> you know what i'm saying but they had that many dragons bro whether they be small or big who's gonna mess with the family that has that many dragons like somebody should have should have came uh, somebody one of the kings one of the queens whoever should have came and said listen we need to stop all this fighting this is stupid this is dumb. Why are we fighting against each other when nobody else is coming for us? Everybody we, we tell to kneel, they kneel because they know what these dragons can do, baby. You know what I'm saying? So it's just crazy to me. Like, why is it that when conflict starts, there's never anyone to be like, let's stop this charade and this stupidity. Because all it is doing is just destroying our legacy, destroying the family. There was nobody in the Targaryen family. And I mean, probably Daenerys is the first one to come along and be like, I want to break this cycle of hatred and this stupidity, slavery, all of this stuff that my essentially her family created this culture. You know what I'm saying? This wheel that she talking about that she wants to break, her family started all this shit. They came over, you know, came over and ruled with fire and blood, you know. So in turn, you know, everything is a result of how they did things. And I know, and I know you guys are going to talk about 
I know you guys are going to bring up Aegon. And um, Aegon, the one that created the Iron Throne and all of this other stuff. And start and brought the Seven Kingdoms together. I know you guys are going to talk about him. Right? And his, I think his two sisters that ruled. And he gave people a choice. He gave people a choice. So during that time when you're conquering, plundering, whatever the situation is, at that point, it certain things are necessary. You get what I'm saying? Like certain things are necessary at that point. So I understand. But the whole family thing was it was completely unnecessary. Let's be honest about it. It was completely unnecessary for them to act that way. It was completely unnecessary for them to be fighting against each other to the point where the dragons became extinct because they decided, listen, man, these dragons are a problem. So they just killed the last four or whatever, um, even though Aegon still had his dragons over there with, um, you know, one of the oldest dragons, um, what do you call it? Sun, Sunfire? Or I don't remember what. I think it was like Sunfire or something like that. That last dragon that ate the, 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 the queen that ran to Dragonstone. That is just the, 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 um, the continuous conflict between Targaryens, man. It's like now you got to be wondering, is Jon and Daenerys going to end up in this situation even though inertly they're trying to portray them as good people, you know, are they going to end up in this situation? You don't, you don't know, but it's, it's the history behind the conflict of, you know, behind them killing each other because I didn't, this is the first time that I'm actually hearing about this. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know it was that bad since they, you know, took the seven kingdoms. Like, I was wondering how all, you know, all the dragons disappeared and stuff like that. But I didn't know that this was a story that explained it. But thank you guys for just suggesting this video, man. It's 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 one of those things where you want it to be different. But it's, you know, you just know. Just, I mean, them being, I mean, even though, you know, they have this connection to magic and stuff like that. It's just that with, with Game of Thrones, you just expect a lot. You just expect so much from the Targaryen. You expect them to be this majestic from the way they're portrayed. You expect them to be majestic, majestic, not necessarily kind, but just from their demeanor and stuff. It's just like, but they're just a bunch of warmongers, <laughs> you know? They're just a bunch of warmongers, man. They just love fighting. And when they don't have anybody to fight against, they just decide to fight against each other. That's just how it is. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm so happy to to be able to react to something like this because it's 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 awesome. Right. And I'm hoping that I get to do more um, of Game of Thrones stuff this week. As I said, keep them coming. Keep the suggestions coming. I have a few more on the list that I need to get to. Um, but I'm going to run out soon. So keep the suggestions coming, guys. Um, if there is a something like a um, I don't have any more comedic material. Um, I love to watch the stuff that makes me laugh because it gets me into my reactions. So I usually do those first, but I haven't had anything like that. That's funny about Game of Thrones or any or any other series for that matter. So I've just been watching like the anime stuff because that's usually sometimes very funny. Um, but if you guys have like a, there's a try not to laugh game of Thrones stuff or something like that, I'll do it. Okay. So drop the link down in the comment section and I'll definitely check it out. As you guys know, let's remind you guys again, get over to discord. Okay. It's in the description. Just click it and it'll, and it'll just let you join or it will prompt you to download the app one way or the other. Okay, so thank you guys for listening once again. It's your boy Terra by React. Remember to like this video and also put a comment in the comment section. Okay, see you guys later. It's your boy Terra by Reacts. In peace.